Thank you. Uh, so today, we, uh, what I'm going to present is something called as a machine learning data pipeline. So, yeah. So this is uh, like a sample data, uh, like how a data preparation step happens for a machine learning. So usually, like in our company, we have a very similar kind of a structure where we have a lot of data sources, basically which we need for applying machine learning or doing some kind of analytics. So what usually happens is, like data doesn't lie in a single database for you. So it usually lies in different database servers. So it might be something like a Hadoop or a HBase cluster, which you can imagine it to be a database server one here. And also you can imagine for a, like a relational databases like MySQL and all, where you have a database server too. And as you have seen in the last presentation, there was a lot of talk of open APIs that one has used for the Singapore government, like all the MRT stations and all. So in our companies and many other companies, in order to use those API, actually we want those API data just to enrich the existing data we have. So we have to consume those API as well. So before anything, before going into machine learning or training or pre-processing or doing some kind of analytics, what we need is a, like a data ingestion layer. So what usually happens in a data preparation? So if we imagine a hypothetical situation where we have like three data sources and we have like three components which are the data ingestion. So the data ingestions are basically consuming the data. And once you have the data, you need to aggregate them. So what you do to aggregate is like you need to find a common field, might be an ID or might be some kind of a name or something, which you need to aggregate together and you have to come up to a single data, like a single view of a data of all the three sources. So you have something called as a data aggregation task. And after that, you have a, like something called as a data pre-processing or a cleaning. So this data pre-processing step is quite important in machine learning because here in this step, you do a lot of like machine learning things. For example, you do a pre-processing, you do a normalizing, you handle the missing values and many other. So that after this step, the data that you get is quite enriched and is ready to go into a machine learning training. So we'll come to a machine learning training part in the later part. And yeah, so after this, so how do we code this? So right now in Python, like few years back, so what we used to do is like we used to write naively a Python code we used to use, for example, a the URL leap to library to consume the API and also for database server used to query using some kind of a like a some kind of SQL alchemy and all this to consume the data from database server one, two, and then we do a join and all. So this is how a naive Python code looks like for this diagram. So you can see here, basically, you have to get data from the API. So you say this is the URL. After you get the data, you just output it to some kind of a CSV format. And also, like you have this database one from where you read the data, and you again say, okay, let me store the, this data into something called a database one.csv. And similar for the database two. Now, I have used an example using the Pandas library, which is a very common library people use for in the machine learning and the data science people out there. So what we do is, uh, for aggregating the data, we again read back all the three CACs that we have got. And we use something called as a pandas.merge on a field called as ID, and we have the aggregated data. And again, we say, okay, let's store this state of the data again. We store it as something called as a data aggregated CSV. Now what happens, the next step is like the pre-process. So for example, you have a function where you handle only the missing data of this data. So what do you do? You again need to read back the aggregated data and say, okay, now take this data frame for me, handle missing data, which accepts a pandas data frame, and it gives you back a clean data frame right now. Now, this all three can be imagined as to be tasks. And you can imagine this execute data preparation pipeline as a wrapper function, which basically execute this task. So it calls the ingest data. So once that is over, it calls the aggregate data. And after that, it calls the pre-process data. So as of now, everything works. Now, as we know, things are never perfect in this computing world. Something or the other goes wrong. So what happens now is, so for example, the first task of getting the data from the API, it works absolutely perfect. You get the data and all. Now you again read the data from the database one. You have the database one data now. You store it as a data underscore db1 csv. 
Now, in the second call, if you see database 2.read, that suddenly due to some like DB issue, it fails. It throws some kind of an error and all, and the whole program stops, and it throws you some errors and all, which you can see in the logs. Might be database uh, servers down or something or the other. Now, what happens if this tape fails? So the, the common thing that comes in my mind, I need to rerun again. Fair enough. So this is where like people will be really pissed off to imagine like, okay, I have already processed the data from the API from the database one, and again I have to do it again. So how do you like how do we handle this step? So the thing that we ask the question, can we resume? That means can we start from where exactly it had stopped? For example, can the system figure out from like where it exactly needs to run again? And it should like know where the intermediate step was after which it needs to process. So this calls for something called as a persistence of task state. So we need to understand, okay, we need to persist some of the states. Like we already have the steps as we are storing as a CSV file. So we can imagine those as to be steps for each and every task. Another thing that uh, we should keep in mind here is like the property of atomicity. So for example, in this failure, database 2.read, what happens is like you read it and you start writing to the db2.csv. So after starting to write, after some time it fails. So what should happen? The db2.csv basically is a dirty file right now and you can't use it. And by now we have to think about something called an atomic file operation. So if the file has to be written, it has to be written in full or either it shouldn't be written at all. So we need to imagine when the state fails, we have to remove this data underscore db2.csv. So let's start again coding. What we do? We now say we'll be checking for the states so that we can avoid the unnecessary repetition of all the steps that has succeed. So what we do? We say, okay, let's check if that path exists or not, since that is our state. Now we see, okay, if it doesn't, take, uh, if it doesn't, then we say, okay, try get that one. And if we get an exception anywhere, what we do to maintain atomicity, we remove that file again back. So right now with your code, you have achieved where to continue from. You know the intermediate step. The second thing that you have done is you have maintained an atomic file operations here, right? Good enough. Now if you imagine this code base, is like you're accessing three, four data sources and you're writing this kind of code. So you can easily imagine the code is getting messier and messier. And for example, now you're taking parameters, parametric methods and all this, things will become more messier for you to handle whether it exists and exists. This thing will continue. So there are two ways to handle it. One, you, you start crying. So I'm not the one who will cry. I'll be the second one. So I'll go on a holiday, leave the whole code base to my team and I'll say, okay, you fix it. I'm going on a vacation. That's a simple thing I'll do. But okay, <clears throat> let's think about how to make this thing. Like instead of writing it every time, whether it exists, it exists, remove if a operation fails and all, how do we do it? Can we have some kind of a thought process behind it or some kind of a boilerplate behind it, which can help us to achieve the same task. So let's think about DAG. So DAG stands for directed acyclic graph. So those who are in the using Apache Spark, they would be knowing and using this concept. So basically this directed acyclic graph is kind of a, a graph which shows interdependency among all the nodes. And it is very similar to Spark, it does a lazy evaluation. So what I mean by a lazy evaluation is, okay, so you see like this is some kind of a, another representation of the same thing that I have here. Oops, yeah the representation of this thing again in a different way. So what I do is like there are, we can imagine there are three processes, uh, three tasks basically, reading an API, reading a DB1 and reading a DB2. And I tell them the output of that is, store, is stored as something as a data API CSV, data DB1 and DB2, similar to earlier. But this data irrigation task has three inputs now. And after that, it stores an output of data aggregated CSV. And after that, it stores, okay, data pre-processing, the data aggregated becomes your input. And finally, you have the clean data, which is ready to go into a training for a machine learning, which is data training.csv. Now, 
what happens like suppose if we draw the graph first and say okay i know these are the tasks i need to execute one by one this depends on this this depends on this and then after finally so after drawing the graph basically the execution starts when it reaches the last step but in our earlier code if we just for example say ingest data it will start ingesting data but in this thing when we think of it as a da dag graph it basically does a some kind of a diagrammatic representation a graphical representation where you can see this task depends on this and this and this we'll see graphs basically like i have snapshots i have it in the demo okay now do we so what if there is a framework which provides you with a very similar kind of thing that you can achieve so yeah so if anybody still remembers there used to be a show called the super uh, mario brothers super sh show so there used to be two fellows like mario and luigi they both used to be plumbers and in their city or town i don't remember they used to be the best plumber of the town so do we need a like a uh, do we need a mario or luigi something like that who can fix this who can plumb this all task stitch it together fine so that if anything fails it will automatically start take care of atomicity and all and obviously once i started in the machine learning world i felt okay this is something very important for me which is needed and so the question comes we need a plumber so here is mario's brother called as luigi and luigi is something that spotify has developed as a like a framework a python library so it basically does a, it has a lot of properties basically the first thing is the dependency resolution which you have already seen <coughs> which i have already seen this dependencies like this uh, data reading uh, this task data aggregation and all these tasks depends on each other so that dependency resolution is handled by luigi itself it also take care of this whole workflow it also has a visualization so if you remember in our earlier like python naive way of writing that code if you cannot see what is the progress of your task of the whole data pipeline what you need to do you need to go and tail the logs basically and see okay what is it uh, what is the step it is processing at but you don't have any kind of a representation or a graphical way of seeing it okay this these steps are over these are pending so luigi provides you that as well as like if it is how to handle a failure if it fails in our naive python way it, it will just fail but in this case what you can say if it fails retry for two times or three times it might be your db server is down for a minute or so so what happens is like it will throw you an error at that moment but luigi what it will do is like it will say okay it failed i'll again retry it in 5 seconds and it will keep it and it has a lot of configurations to play around so this is how basically a luigi task looks like so if you see the first thing you see is a parameter it says a param which it takes as luigi dot parameter so so everything here in a luigi is a task basically you can see there is a like my task which basically inherits a like a class called as a luigi dot task and you have this parameter so a parameter is something like if a task for example so if i want to train a model daily so my parameter should be the day so i should pass a parameter as date today state and it will create the models and everything and store it that way and requires is something it's telling this task my task is dependent on something so you say okay what i require on so basically this is where you say the dependency so this my task is dependent on some other task so this is how it maintains the dependency and the run is basically where the main business logic lies where you can write the whole code the whole business execution and everything whatever you need and output is basically where it writes or stores the state so for example you read data from somewhere you do a processing do some kind of thing and you say okay this is where i want to write it to so each and every task now you can imagine has a dependency it says this task is dependent on some other task and after completing it after running the whole logic here it writes it somewhere so this becomes like a very very easy way of like it's a very good boilerplate to start with so you can write all your task as now like we'll see in future like uh, in the uh, in the coming slides like how we write now into a luigi way of writing this code okay this is where it comes now we luigify our data preparation tasks so earlier it was a api data ingestion 
So what we do, we make it as a class because API data ingestion itself is a task. So what we say, so if you remember the graph here, the API data ingestion doesn't depend on any task. Neither does read db1, neither does read db2. So these are three tasks which are independent and can happen in parallel. <coughs> so what happens? You have the API data ingestion. So you don't see anything called as request because it is not dependent on any task. So it does some kind of a operation of like reading from the API and it has an output. You can see that output is maintained. And basically after running it, you write it to that output again. So you maintain the state for the API data ingestion layer. And after that, you go into the database one ingestion, which is very similar. You read it and you write it. So basically, you have now make this three task of API reading and the two database reading into three Luigi tasks. Now, what we are left with is the data aggregation part now. So we have the three, uh, we have the data from the three sources written into a CSV. Now we need to uh, aggregate the data, basically. So in the data aggregation part, you can see, okay, it, it is dependent on three tasks now. It is dependent on these three states, data API, CSV, DB1, and DB2. So what we have is we use a require and say, okay, you yield three, these are the three things, which basically is now a generator. So basically these three tasks have to finish before this task can be executed. So this data aggregation now, before even like starting to run itself, it will run all the three tasks. And after that, in the logic, what I do is a simple, again, the same logic where I just use a pandas.march to basically create a single view of the data. And I say, okay, the output of this fellow would be like data aggregated.csc. Okay, now this data pre-processing uh, task, which basically is the main task that we need to do. So data pre-processing only depends on one single task, which is basically uh, the data aggregated.csv state. And once the data aggregation is over, then only a data pre-processing can happen. So basically we have the data pre-processing part where we get the data aggregation. We call uh, the, in the re request, we put a data aggregation task and we do some kind of like pre-processing hand handling, missing values, outliers, and many other things. And we store it again back to a data training. So now we go into the step which is basically training a machine learning. You have the data with yourself right now. You have something called as a clean data training now. Now, how do we train a machine learning? So we can say, okay, now this training, this train class, which is a ta Luigi task again, it requires something called as a data pre-processing because it requires a pre-processed data now. So how do we run now? In the run part, we say, okay, let's run a random forest or some kind of ridge regression, some kind of a model. And we say, okay, this is the data frame that we pass it to that method. And we have something called as a cells model, which is basically right now a pickle object. And we store this pickle object into the output you can see for this output method. So this is basically the target where we store it. So once we run train, what happens? So once we run train, it basically draw, it starts to uh, draw the graph basically. It will start, okay. Train depends on data aggregation. Data aggregation, uh, sorry, data pre-processing. Now data pre-processing depends on data aggregation. Data aggregation depends on the three data ingestion of DB1, DB2, and API. So this is the graph that basically Luigi will draw out and start executing the tasks. So this is how, uh, like this, uh, we'll see it in the demo as well. This is uh, like a sample of like how, when you start executing, how it starts. So it will check. So you can see, you can read here. So the, the debug log here, it says, okay, if it, it is checking if train is complete, it is then it will check whether data pre-processing is complete. And it will check again whether aggregate train data. Then it will say, okay, train data ingestion, store data ingestion. These are the two data basically I'm reading. And it will say, okay, this has status pending, pending, pending. Now, once the pending is over, you can allocate a, like n number of workers to them. So what will happen? You say, okay, I want to run uh, with five processes. So basically two processes will, uh, in our case, in our example, three, pro uh, three workers will take on the three processes here. Basically reading API data ingestion DB1 and DB2. So three workers will start working here. And the, uh, the two workers will remain idle because until and unless these three task finishes, the other workers can't do anything. So once this is finished, all the three finished, then 
automatically the data aggregation will start. So only one worker will be active that time and rest four will be idle. So this is how the execution starts. And you can see like, okay, Luigi uh, basically creates a new process ID for each and every job that it starts triggering. And this is how a Luigi scheduler looks like. So you can actually see a graph here. So we start a Luigi in a, like a central scheduler using something called as Luigi D. And we say, okay, let's run the Luigi pipeline. And you can see the graph here, like you can see, okay, the train thing that is still pending. The data pre-processing part, part is running right now. The three greens here means, okay, it is done. So the aggregation is done. The data reading from two data sources, that is also done. So we'll see all these examples in the demo. So yeah, so let's go into the demo. Okay. So, okay, there are two things too. So what we'll show first is like, we'll run it in a local scheduler. Local scheduler is something like, is used when you want to do a debugging for debugging. When you're in the development phase, you want to write code, you want to see everything is right or not. So what we do is, so let's just run the code as it is. And just, let's see. Okay. So you can see here, the same thing like here you can see, okay, it is like aggregated, checking if aggregate train data is complete, status pending, it will continue. It will check all the workers will ask for more tasks until and unless it has completed. So just to tell you, uh, this example actually is from Kaggle basically. You can refer to the Kaggle um, website here. You can get the data here as well. Also, like in my GitHub repo, you'll find the data. And also it says like how to install and everything. So I have a, like a build.sh. Those are in the Linux or Mac environment. Can just build it and automatically things will start working. So you can download the data. So basically this data comprises of two data. One is like a, the transactional data about like, you can see here, this is how the training data, uh, okay, let's see here. The test data looks like it has ID stored, day of week, date, open, and many other parameters. And what we do is like we try to predict the cells. Also, there is an information called a store.csv, which is basically the information of a store. What is the store type? What is the competition distance and many other. So we can imagine as this data to be the store data to lie in some database one server and this data basically the transactional data to lie in some other database server. So it's basically mocking that kind of an environment with two different CSVs. So let's see what happened to our running. Okay, so this says this progress looks good because there was no failed task or missing external dependencies. So if we go to the TMP folder where we have created everything, we see now that we have a, like a model pickle object, we have the training clean data, the training stores data, the training data, and also the aggregated data. So basically all the tasks have run successfully, they have created all their dependencies using the TMP states and all this thing. So, okay. Now, what we need to do, we'll see it running in a central scheduler. So for running in a central scheduler, what you need to do is, you need to just remove this flag called as local scheduler. And you just run it. Okay, another thing is you need to run, you can see the, yeah, you can follow here how to start the Luigi D central scheduler. So you can just run a Luigi D ampersand, which will basically run the central scheduler as a daemon, Python, uh, a Python daemon process. And it will have a, like an internal, I think, a HTTP server, where, which you can access at a local host port of 8082. So we'll see that now. So what we do is, okay, fair enough, let's go here. So we say, okay, let's start the Luigi D process. So Luigi D process starts. Now we see, okay, Let's try to access this. Can we see? Okay, we see there are no tasks running, nothing is running and all. So we go again back here. So we have changed the parameter to right now run for a, like a central scheduler. Like we have removed the flag, uh, the local scheduler. So what we do is like we just run it. Okay, so before, okay, this task now says, okay, there is no tasks which are missing. Why is it saying? Because all the dependencies here exist. So what we need to do is we need to remove this, all the dependencies here. So, so once we run it here, you can see here now. 
Okay. This is how you can see what are the tasks it is running. So if you go to a click single graph, you can see, okay, this is how the graph looks like. So you have the train basically, which is still pending. You have the data pre-processing, aggregate train data is, it's running. So you reload, okay, aggregated train data is like completed data pre-processing and train and all these things. And apart from that, you can see what are the pending tasks and all you can also like, if there is an error, usually it will show you a red kind of a, like a, it will show you the exact Python error and you can just click on it and see, okay, what is the, what is the error there? So it is like very useful, this like visualization, actually, you can see the progress of your task and many other things. So let's go here again. Okay. So the task has finished. Okay. So I think also some other things that we can see here is so actually, yeah, it's not available right now, but you can see all the historical tasks here. If you maintain a, like a SQLite DB as a configuration. And apart from the configurations here, there is this Luigi documentation where you can find a lot of useful things. You can find, for example, like, okay, what is the error email to be set and all these parameters. And so also like this are like many parameters you can pass, like I told data, uh, like date time as a parameter and all, all these things you can say an email, as I told the error email type. And also you can use this actually to even run HDFS tasks as well from a, like a Luigi framework. And also this is like quite famous among the spark people who wants to like do a spark submit task into like using some kind of a Python framework or something. And apart from that, I think, yeah. Another thing that was part of like the presentation, which I didn't show right now is like, so how do you predict? You have created the model right now. So you have something called as if you go to LS, you have the pickle object. So how do you deploy this in a production? So that was like a small part of it, which I thought like, why not show it? So basically if you go into my code base, you have something called as a flask, flask app server. So basically I use flask to like, which has basically something called as a endpoint called as a predict cells. So you basically pass the data to this guy. It will use this model that you have created and pass on a prediction. So it becomes like more of a, like a sales prediction API for you right now, for your company, if you want. So let's see that part as well, which is like quite basic here. So what we do is like, we say, okay, Python plus app server dot PUA. So it starts running. So if you want the prediction, what you can do is like, okay, I'm just using advanced risk client to show you. So, okay, this is the data. This is the store. This is the day of week, date, open, promo, state, holiday, school, holiday. And these are the parameters for which I need the prediction. So let's see, let's pass a, like a request to that fellow. It comes and says, okay, this is your predicted cells. So this part of the code is also lying in the GitHub. Those who want to play around, please play around, feel free to. And also there is one part of the code, which is quite useful in some cases, which uh, some part, yeah. So when you want to retrain a model, so my Flask API server here, something called as the load model part. So this load model basically reloads this predict cells, which is this module. And this module basically again loads the pickle object in memory. So this is something like quite useful for people like who just wants to keep on something retraining the model like hourly, but you don't want to restart your Flask app server again and again and again. So you just pass a, like a, some kind of an endpoint reloading that module particularly. When you reload again, what happens? This predict cells again, it will reload. So that means this model path. So this pickle object would be again red. So. You can also like, yeah, so this is what it does here in the ML pipeline. So if you just uncomment this part of the code, so basically after the training happens, it dumps the model to the state that you have asked it to. And after that, it will try, okay, let's load the models again. So basically uh, behind the scene, your model is already reloaded. You need not care at all. So I think, yeah. So. Let's go back to the slides. Okay, some of the limitations is like, okay, they don't have a scheduler right now. So we rely on cron basically, like in my company, we have a fraud detection system, which basically runs using Luigi and a lot of data sources here and there. So we still rely on cron for that. 
so it doesn't have a scheduler and also like in some scenarios many people have looked forward for luigi to run multiple executions so you can imagine this uh, many task can run parallelly in diff- in a cluster mode it can run on one node some task it can run that execution uh, is still lacking and uh, i as far as i remember in the jira i have seen a lot of like people commented about it there are many open tickets about it i'm pretty sure spotify will come up with something in the next versions or something and that is something we're looking forward to actually and yeah some of the useful links which you'll find here please go ahead play around there are a lot of things and uh, you can see my github repo here you can just have a click and y- you have everything there how to install and all these things and feel free to ping me there okay thank you please feel free to reach for any queries so yeah any questions okay one more thing also I, those were those would be using for a machine learning there is a known issue that i wanted to point it out to you which me and many of other people have actually found, found out which i have written here so if you are using sk learn and you are starting uh, you are starting to do a cross validation or a grid search or something with a n jobs which is basically parallel processing how many number of jobs you want to run parallelly if you give it greater than 1 there would be scenarios where you like face an issue with telling like okay there is some kind of a weird error it will throw so that is something uh, even everyone is aware of and is working on it. it like what i when i debugged it i found the issue to be because luigi assigns something called as a process assignment id so once a process assignment id is done after that when you start to create multiple when you give multiple workers then it start to do again multiple jobs that is where it actually it gets into something weird and throws an error so just be careful when you use a grid search cv or anything in jobs greater than 1 <coughs> yeah any questions yeah um, well actually i i play around with Ruby a little bit okay but, but it was rather, uh, i mean it's rather shallow um one issue that i have in mind is that um i feel a little bit um troublesome to have to build small components and and test around it and then play around with it and until it is done um i put it into a dad mm, into a uh um. into into a into a pipeline like in dad okay <laughs> like the, the debugging process mm-hmm. um makes it a little bit i mean i feel google is having a pretty heavy uh full chain by boiler play mm-hmm. and wrap around Mm-hmm. uh the task that that i don't i haven't found any way to make the make small people steps convenient and we have any so okay the spotify recommendation for using luigi basically is to keep your task small so make sure that your task is for example if you want to read from a server read from something get the data process it make sure you store the state so it like each and every kind of a, like a software you can, you need not need a luigi basically why you know there is a lot of dependency between tasks that is when luigi comes into the picture and actually like we have like quite two three systems right now which is in production at my company in pocket math which actually works fine and even with this dashboard coming up with the visualizer so if i have to ask my devops people like there is there something wrong they can directly go into that port and say no all the tasks ran successfully yesterday and all and all so it becomes so easy for you to manage as well but imagine like you're writing a naive python code something goes wrong you need to log into the server go find the logs tail it but debugging like i'm not pretty sure what exact the issue but we can take it offline like what exactly were your use case and we can have a discussion sure, sure. yeah Okay, thanks Andrea. Thank you.